That is Radiohead at Coachella in 2012. They didn't know it at this moment, but just a few dates later, their tour would end in catastrophe. The tragic end of Radiohead's biggest North American tour in years was here in Canada, in Toronto, with a deadly stage collapse. After five years, attempts to hold anyone responsible have gone nowhere. As part of an intensive CBC investigation into Canada's workplace fatalities, Katie Nicholson uncovered details about the Radiohead case that have never been heard before. Crews were setting up the stage ahead of a Radiohead concert. We heard what sounded like an enormous cabinet of glasses falling over. Minutes before the gates opened, the stage ceiling came crashing down. The top of the structure had buckled. You just saw several people lying on the stage. We could see Scott lying under a piece of equipment. Toronto was the last stop on the English band's tour. 33-year-old drum tech Scott Johnson was crushed to death. Something that was meant to bring, you know, a lot of joy that evening, as it just resulted in, in the death of Scott. Scott Johnson was in demand as a drum technician, working for Keen, The Killers, and of course, Radiohead. He'd been with the band roughly two years when he boarded a plane for its 2012 North American tour. It was an elaborate spectacle. By the time it hit Canada, it was a well-oiled machine. An intense light show with huge spinning screens hung suspended in the air, weighing some 30,000 kilograms. Underneath it all, one of the best drummers in the world, Philip Selway. Death, especially a death without answers, has a way of bringing people together. Hey dear, bless him. I'll have to show you the photo. In a country churchyard in South Yorkshire, a rock star and a grieving father pay their respects. It's been five years since Ken Johnson lost his son. And in that time, no convictions, no fines, and no answers about how it happened. His word was proper. When something was right, it was proper, yeah. It sums him up, really. Uh... It's been too hard for Ken's wife, Sue, to talk publicly about the loss of their only child. Thank you very much. Until now. I didn't, I didn't worry that we wouldn't get justice. Yeah. And I feel so let down by Canada. I really do. The Johnsons feel robbed of justice, but they still have their memories. Get us on Skype and he'd stick his laptop out the window and show us around the town, wherever he was, you know. He just loved his work. He was happy, he was... Yeah. Uh, he I'm liked. glad at least he were doing something that he absolutely loved. Yeah. 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 In Los Angeles, the British rock world's go-to production manager, you know, Richard you Young. You He's got tours with that. everyone from you Adele know, to Nine Inch Nails under his belt. He remembers some reservations yeah, like, uh, among the Radiohead uh, crew that day in Toronto. No, there's definitely a, a feeling, a conversation about, oh, well, this, this is, this, this technology's old, this equipment's old. You know, it's been a long time since I've, we've played on this kind of stage. Live Nation is the world's largest live entertainment company. It handled all the venue arrangements for the tour. It hired a local Ontario business, Optic Staging, to construct the stage. Optics contracted engineer Dominic Culiari to draw the plans for the stage at the Downsview venue. 
that's somewhere in that triangle accountability lies. Radiohead's insurance company hired forensic engineer Doug Perovic to help them find answers. I know these are actually seats used by members of the crew. You can see this one's been crushed. Metal built to withstand thousands of pounds of pressure buckled and bent. So this structure is a multi-point loaded uh, temporary structure. And uh, when you look at the available the existing codes and standards uh, in Canada, there isn't actually one that relates specifically for temporary structures of that type. So typically, engineers design those structures to handle two to four times more weight than needed. That begs a question. Was the structure as built the same as uh, what was intended uh, in the design specifications? It took a full year for the Ministry of Labour to finish an investigation into the collapse. Its findings were never publicly released. The Ministry of Labour told CBC News if it wanted to see the investigation report, we'd have to file a Freedom of Information request. We did, and we're still waiting. We're not expected to work in dangerous situations. You know, there are some, there are some careers out there where you put yourself in harm's way. The entertainment industry shouldn't be putting anybody in harm's way. Philip Selway especially feels a heavy burden. For the first time, he reveals there was nearly a very different headline that day. When the collapse happened, it happened at four o'clock in the afternoon. Our sound check was due to start at four o'clock. And I actually should have been where Scott was. And that is an incredible weight and I can't, personally, I can't let this lie. In 2013, one year after the collapse, Live Nation, Optic Staging and The Engineer were charged with 13 offences under Ontario's occupational health and safety laws. All three pleaded not guilty. But like the stage, the case against the three would also collapse. The case was in its third year when something unusual happened. With just three days left in the trial, the presiding judge was appointed to federal court. He decided he no longer had jurisdiction and declared a mistrial. This past September, a full five years after the collapse, the judge who took his place ruled in favour of the defendant's application to have the case dropped under the Jordan ruling which set strict timelines to ensure a speedy trial. All 13 charges were stayed. The news was devastating for the Johnsons, who can't wrap their head around the fact that after five years, there are still no answers. They seem to have forgot Scott in all this. It's, yeah. it's almost as if they've mm -hmm. tried the best to delay and delay. Yeah to try and get themselves mm -hmm. off with these charges. But they yeah. seem to forget that Scott lost his life because oh, somebody yeah. made a mistake. We expect justice to be done. Um, you expect uh, a, uh, you know, a, a court case to, to find out what happened um, for anybody who is, uh, has any uh, culpability in it to accept responsibility and then out of all of that you expect uh, measures to be taken. No one has had to face the music for any role in Scott Johnson's death but Radiohead promises to shine a spotlight on it until that changes. For The National, I'm Katie Nicholson in Doncaster, England. CBC News has learned that tomorrow, as a result of heightened interest in this case, Ontario will call an inquiry into the Radiohead stage collapse. As we mentioned, this story comes as a result of a CBC News investigation into about 250 cases of workplace fatalities in Canada. We'll have extensive coverage on television, on radio and online tomorrow. 
Among the findings, some sobering numbers. For instance, maximum fines are rarely imposed on employers after someone dies on the job. The median fine across Canada, $97,500. There are potentially stiff penalties for criminal liability, but CBC could find only five employers who have ever served jail time in connection to a workplace death.